Right now, folks, we have our second professional fight of the evening coming up right now. It's in the 160-pound weight class. Let's see the tail of the tape for that right now. Tail of the tape, Joseph Holt, 30 years of age. He's 5'9", he weighs 155 pounds. He sports a 6-2 professional mixed martial arts record. His opponent, Andrew Osborne, 27 years old, slight height advantage at six foot tall. He weighs in at 165, 60 pounds, excuse me. His record is seven and nine. To correct you, Chuck, this is a catch weight at 160 pounds. Excellent. It's supposed to be 155 pounds. They, they both agreed to 160. Okay, looks like one fighter made 160, the other agreed great sportsmanship. So this fight's gonna be contested at 160 pounds, our second fight of the evening. I believe we are ready for the official introduction of the fighters. Let's go back cage side with Dan Bogan. Waiting here, waiting in here for the arrival of Andrew Osborne as he makes his way to the cage. Andrew Osborne holds a seven and nine record. He tells me he trains at a UFC gym, uh, an actual sponsored UFC gym, which is just incredible. And he's also a trainer there also. Yeah, that shows the caliber of fighter and the experience he has for the UFC. The biggest organization on the planet for mixed martial arts is actually entrusting him into teaching students there and that's where his full-time training is he does do a lot of cross training he's always learning but uh, his main camp is with the ufc gym uh 16 fights a lot of fights for this young man and he's not afraid to bang no he is not afraid to bang and somebody with a seven and nine record simply just they just they know exactly what to do. They know how to go in there. They know how to throw hands in. They've probably been in every situation you can think of in a fight game. Yeah, and it means they like to fight. You know, they're not scared to fight. They're not worried about just sometimes just compiling a record of all wins and no losses. They want to go at it, and that's a dangerous fighter for any fighter to fight. You know what that tells me? That means he loves the sport, and he continue, He, he just wants, he continues wanting to do it. His last win actually was over a Bellator, Bellator veteran, Damian Straits. Wow. By a TKO. Interesting. Very and interesting. And now he's on a smaller stage of, of the Gladiators of the Cage, and he's willing to do the same exact thing. Yeah, absolutely. He's fought all over. He's definitely a tough customer and always ready to go. Now, who's he going against, Chuck? That would be Joey Holt, who's Dan Bogan's introducing. Uh, I think you can hear by the reaction of the crowd who the hometown guy is and who has a lot of friends and family supporting him. How much does that mean going into a fight, Rich? That is just a, a morale booster like none other. I started a, a while ago. I didn't have that kind of that kind of crowd. Uh, it was all the fights were in Ohio. There was no PA, no local crowds. But it's just amazing to see the crowd that this Joey Holt brings. Yeah, he really does. And it shows kind of the character of a person, I believe, also. When you have that many people willing to follow you, willing to support you, that must mean in your personal life you're doing something right because all those people uh, come out to support you. Man, what a great feeling of camaraderie. And, you know, can it work against you, though, Rich? It definitely can't work against you. You could be... You could be too over energetic. You could uh, jump to jump to situations that you're not willing to jump into. Yeah. It, it's just it's all about being prepared. You got to calm yourself. Joey, the Hitman Holt. Why do you think they call him the Hitman? Because he'll take out anybody. And he he's fighting with Impact Fight Team. He's also a professional boxer. He holds a four and zero record with three knockouts and zero victories. Yeah. Wow. He's very, very impressive, and he's not afraid to dabble in other sports and compete. A very interesting fact, you see the gentleman in the gray shirt that's wearing the Sandman shirt right in front of him. Who is that big guy, Rich? That is Chris Dempsey, UFC fighter exactly. from Gladiators of the Cage. 
and the gentleman in the red hoodie is his brother, Kyle Holt. He inspired, Joey inspired Kyle Holt to take on fighting. And I watched jo Joey Holt's, or Kyle Holt's last fight, and it was incredible. I really, really enjoyed it. And I was talking about a Bellator veteran and a win. Joey Holt was nominated for KO of the Year. Oh, wow. And he lost to Anderson Silva. Huh. So he was on the same level with that knockout. It was with a flying knee. And for something tells me in this fight we may see something spectacular so if you're watching fans at home don't blink this one may not last long these guys like to go at it and Joey Holt is a human highlight reel and I can't wait Andrew Osborne a lot of experience and he's a gunslinger this is going to be an epic battle I do believe that one of these two guys, uh, I don't think they want it to go to the decision, neither of them. I think they both want to win and win in a decisive manner. And if Joey Holt gets this seventh professional victory, there's going to be some even bigger names out there calling him and alluring him, and maybe even the UFC. Um, you know, and he, look who he has in his support. He is his corner, a, a current UFC fighter in Dempsey. So, you know, Chris has the ear of you know, Joe Silva and those people in the Ultimate Fighting Championships, and he keeps chirping, hey, I got this guy out in Pennsylvania fighting for a great promotion. It's time maybe we put him in an international level. Well, he does have two losses, but you can't take anything away from him. One of his losses against an absolute warrior, Robert Hanna IV, who is now the champion of Gladiators of the Cage. Their fight for the Pinnacle show back in 2013 was an incredible battle. And I'm sure he would love to avenge that loss, and he may be able to do it after a victory tonight. Let's go down to Dan Bogan for the official announcement of this fight. Favorite Chuck. And he seems to thrive on it. He weighed in at even 160 pounds. His specialty is boxing and wrestling. He stands five feet eight inches tall, 30 years of age. His record six wins, two losses. He represents the Impact Fight Team all the way from East River. Okay, sir, are you ready to go? Sir, are you ready to go? Come on, let's bang! It doesn't seem that Andrew Osborne is one bit worried about the home crowd advantage, and it didn't seem that Joey Holt minded it one bit that those people were there backing him. So I don't know if there's going to be a big favoritism there as far as who it's going to work for advantage to, but you got to think somewhere in the back of your mind that Joey, he really wants to win this in front of this crowd. Throwing some nice leg kicks. There's a head kick right there. Yeah. Ooh. Another head kick in return. Very good job. Good job, Osborne, keeping his hands up. Joey seems very loose already on his feet. Osborne, ooh, very hard body kick, kind of swiped away by Joey Holt. And as you see, Joey's, pu Joey's pushing forward, even though Osborne's throwing nice, nice kicks. Yeah. And if, if you were Andrew Osborne, what would your game plan be against a person like Joey Holt, who is just good all around? Yeah, really try to dictate the pace of your fight. Stay in his face. Don't give him a lot of ability to extend. But on the other side of that, Joey Holt has a very, very good boxing uh, you know, background. So if you get in close to him and he's able to really turn his body into those punches, he's going to do damage. And Andrew Osborne, he has 10 years of wrestling experience. He might want to use that to his advantage and try to get away from Joey Holt's hands. His hands, there's a reason why they call him the hitman, and it's because he hits hard. He has some brutal power in those hands, and he's not afraid to let him loose at any moment, and it can come fast. They're still feeling each other out, throwing kicks, punches. And that's the difference here with the five-minute rounds like we talked about. You know, it gives you that extra time to feel out your opponent before you get to the wrestle. Oh, a slip oh, a slip. by Holt. 
Gets up fast, nice and composed. Good job by Joey Holt. Nice. Now he rocked him, I think, with oh, that he left hit him hand. Right, I'd like right to see him push ear. in. Joey needs to push in. It looks like he rocked him. He knocked him off balance. Osborne seems to be trying to gather himself, but he's a veteran, so oh, another nice shot. You Good can job see, you can off. see Joey opening up. He is throwing that jam over, jab over and over and over again. The most important part of stand-up is the jab, and it's the simplest thing to throw. It's your setup of everything. Joey holds switch and stand, switch and feet. Now, now, Joey Holt, would you continue pushing forward and using your hands to your advantage? You know, it seems like that might be the idea, but th that's a great job to stop Joey Holt from coming straight ahead. Those inside leg kicks and those body kicks are very, very hard. If you want to take away the power of a power puncher, take away his legs with inside leg kicks. If you throw outside leg kicks, what's the counter, Rich? Outside leg kicks, if you throw outside leg kicks, it's an overhand right. Exactly. Take away the power by working the inside of the legs, but Holt just doesn't seem... Good job once again, working the inside of the legs, trying to take away Holt's power. There it is, like we were just through. talking about. Very good job. Andrew Osborne trying to use his wrestling. It seems to me Andrew Osborne's game plan into at least this round was to be taking out his legs. Like you said before, to take a power of a, out of a puncher, you take away his legs. That's exactly right. I'm doing both here with a, doing a good job of cage control. I'd like to see Holt circle off. Good job. As we always train, this is a battle here. Your fans are watching, it may just look like these two guys are just hugging up against the fence. It's not the case. They're really doing a good job of clinching, and there's a battle going on here, a very strenuous battle. Great knee there. It's actually a battle of trying to get off the cage and put your other opponent on it. Now they separate it, back to the middle. Jimmy Holt returning with leg kicks. Still feeling each other out. And now Andrew Osborne is now using his jab more often. He has a little bit of a reach advantage. Something that's interesting to me, what a nice job of switching up and getting the takedown oh, on the wrestler. Nice. Though. You didn't even expect that. Joey Holt went in right after it. He took him right down. It's exactly right. I was just getting ready to say, it looks like Holt is setting up for something. Like everything he's done so far in this fight was to set up one move. And right now, that may have been the move. And you notice he did it with a little over a minute left in the round. I think he's looking to try. Oh, he's going for a spinning arm bar, but it gave uh, Osborne a little bit of room to get up. Good Osborne job. Quickly gets up protecting his head good because job. Joey Holt's going to throw punches. Yep, very that good was job. A great takedown by Joey Holt. He tried to get into side control, then he tried for an arm bar. Almost took Osborne's back. Yep, and Joey Holt will do. Oh, he kicks nice, the mouthpiece. Nice piece kicks right the mouthpiece out. out. He's Jim's letting the fight go because he's hurt. Good right hand by Holt. The crowd he's is hurt. Going he's crazy. backing up. Osborne's Osborne backing up. No he mouthpiece. is hurt. He is hurt. Chip's Stop. looking for oh. a break in the oh. action. He's oh. got to get that mouthpiece out. And I'm sure Osborne is going to get a scolding in a way from Snyder here saying, look, this can't come out again because that was a pivotal moment of the fight. Chip did a great job letting it go on as long as he could before jeopardizing the safety of the fighters. And as you heard the crowd, they weren't too pleased with it, but you have to trust Chip, judgment, Chip Snyder's judgment here. He has been doing this a long time. Well, when you have a family member or a friend in there and you see an opening and then all of a sudden it gets stopped, it's easy to react that way. But Chip is not looking for that. He's not a favorite of either one. He's here to do justice in the right way you know, to the rules. And he does a phenomenal job at it. I agree. Less than 10 seconds. It looks Coming like this one's going to be slow, slowed down a little bit. I'm going to give that to Joey Holt simply for his takedown. And that last, that last minute of the whole entire fight is when the takedown happened and also the kick to the face. As crazy as it sounds, it seems like that whole round he had planned and he was setting up for that takedown. And then he was able to secure that takedown. And then uh, he went, he was going to go for a beautiful spinning arm bar when he had his back. But it gave Osborne that little bit of time to get back up, protected his face. And then shortly after, a big side kind of front kick throw knocks the mouthpiece out of Osborne's mouth flying. And a really, really entertaining first round. I know you're a great coach, and you know what to tell your athletes in the corner. What would you be saying to Joey Holt right now? Great job of mixing things up. Great job of kind of dictating the pace of the fight. Beautiful timing and a beautiful job of changing levels to get that takedown. Keep throwing more combinations. Let's get one twos in. Okay, so we get one down the, the pike water, and then one hook, and that leg kick won't be as effective. I'm seeing Joey coming out, using his jab to his advantage, and, and just capitalizing on right. that overhand right. That's what I'm seeing this round. On the other side of that, what are you seeing on Osborne? What do you say if you're his quarterman as the second round starts? 
I'm gonna. If I, if I was in Osborne's sir, corner, I would tell him to close the distance and go for that takedown. He need he needs a takedown. He needs to change it up a little bit, just like Joey Holt did in the first. Yeah. Whoa, Holt going up high now. Osborne's got to use his reach, get that jab, and try to get in close to close the distance for a takedown. Yeah, he's really got to get in and set that. He's got to set that takedown up with some punches, like you said. Oh, good high nice kick combo. on Holt. Very good high kick that caught Joe Holt flush, but it caught the top of his head. He's getting a little over aggressive, Osborne. If he keeps doing that, I guarantee you Holt's going to take him down. Osborne's doing a really nice job showing three punch combos. He's not throwing one punches, not two punches, but he's throwing three. And that's dictating the pace of the fight. And when asked about what Joey Holt should do, throw combinations. Sometimes the guy throwing more punches is the one that's going to control the action. Punches and bunches, as I like to say, Chuck. Joey Holt's doing a good job, though. Look how he's cutting off the cage of Osborne. He cut off the cage and got him backed up against the fence. Osborne needs to circle towards the center of the cage and square back up. He has thrown a mean uppercut. Joey Holt must see an opening in Osborne's hands. He is just throwing an uppercut. He just threw three of them this round. Big, strong uppercuts. Good point, Rich. Osborne's still continuing going after his legs. Absolutely. Nice low kick, but followed up by combinations. There's what we talked about. That allows him to close that distance, and he's got a tight body lock, or what we call double underhooks, and then body clinching. He has control of Osborne right now. Osborne needs to fight his hands inside and try to get off the, he does not want to keep his back up against that fence. He's going to work knees here to try to get out, it looks like. Well, Osborne did a real nice job of using head movement and making him miss. Exactly. Now they're up against the cage. Joey Holt has double underhooks right now, which is, it's very, very important in the grappling game to get double underhooks. Now, right now, how much is the sweat at this point, almost midway through the second round, going to become a factor? It's a, it's a huge factor, especially with the, the gloves and trying to grip the body, it, it just it just starts to get real slimy, greasy, and it's just not a good good time to hold it. It's kind of wasting energy at some point. Yeah, yeah, you can definitely see the difference in the first round, how long they stayed up against that cage struggling to try to get control. And then the second round, it just seemed like they were just sliding all over the place. I'm starting Holt to see Osborne maybe, maybe tiring oh. out a little bit from Holt stalking. I think so. Great high kick. And look how Holt is getting him up against the fence. Osborne must circle and get back to the center. Holt is doing a phenomenal oh, job. Nice strong right, right one, two. Right. Osborne is hurt. Holt is looking to find his next strike. He's seeing it open up and open up an overhand right by using kicks. Exactly. Mix and match. I'm waiting to see a nice strong one-two right now from Joey Holt landing right to flush down the middle. What experience though by Osborne to keep him in this fight, even absorbing a couple heavy shots. Osborne's not giving up. He's continuing throwing punches right now. Both men doing a great job. Back and forth battle. Now you see Joey Holt, he's working a double jab now. And Osborne's backing up. He's protecting himself. I feel like he's tired. He's just a warrior. He continues to I think Holt fighting. needs to turn it on right now. When, when he starts putting his head down, we've talked about this. You know, you've just got to unload sometimes. When your opponent's backs up against the cage, let your hands fly. What's the worst nice that can happen? Nice body shot. Mixing it up now. As you see, Joey Holt with his boxing experience, he look is throwing punches movement. to the body. Yeah, look at his head movement. He's starting, he's just, he's just really getting in the zone here. He looks, he looks really good right now. He seems to be in very, good, very good shape right now. He's not breathing heavy, and he is stalking. Yeah. Oh, spinning back kick that just missed. Oh, Holt seems to keep pulling away, though, instead of turning it on there when he gets him stand up against the cage. I'd like to see Holt throw three, four, five punch combinations. It looks like Osborne is really, really just trying to make something happen with these kicks. But look, he's not circling out. He's going right back to the cage. And as you see, Joey's... He's throwing those jabs out. It's not meeting into intent to hurt him. There it is. There's the uppercut. Another good openings. body shot. Openings. He's using that jab as openings. Nice kick by Joey Holt. There's that spin kick again. He felt he almost had success with it. He's just, he's hitting him from, oh, that hurt him. And that was over. He's trying kick. to get out of this round right now. I don't know, but he's, Holt's got to turn it on. He hit him in the liver with a great left low kick. He's got to turn the And he continues up. punching the body. body shots. He's, oh, it's going to be over if he continues going on punching the body. Holt's on the floor. The crowd's on their feet. 20 seconds left. Can body head. Body stand. head. He is using a great job. Oh, high run, high run. Chips he's running chip. close. He's down. He's trying. Yeah, he's, oh, he's trying. He's, he's going to land. He's, he's going. Oh, it's 
it's going to be over. Chip's going to stop it. He stopped it. He stopped it. It's over. Joey Hulk victorious. With seconds to go in the second round. Oh, that was action packed. I understand Andrew Osborne doesn't like the outcome of it, but he was hurt. Yeah, and I don't think he had much left in the gas tank, honestly, for the third round. If he wasn't, if he wasn't hurt, he would have already been on his feet protesting that stoppage. No one wants to lose. Got to give him credit for that. But Joey Hope, what a stellar performance. That was a top quality, high level performance to put Joey Holt to seven and two. And you want to talk about a contender for Rob Hanna's belt. We found him. Oh, we found him. I think he might be looking for his revenge from that last loss. I'm sure and, he would and love if you that. Did, and if, as you can see, Joey Holt has a huge crowd. That crowd absolutely erupted whenever he started landing those combos. Well, well, you can see how many people out there are just on their feet for this kid. Likeable personality, seven now and two. Hannah, I can assure you, is going to be watching this fight and maybe right now watching this fight in the crowd. He's seeing who his next opponent is. Not that Hannah cares. He'll fight anybody. But you better take notice of this guy. And that right there by Joey Holt, to me, was a statement fight, Rich. You know, you know what I'm looking forward to? Joey Holt, Robert Hanna, too. You know what? That could be next. Here comes our instant replay. Rich, take it over in the final moments. Andrew Osborne's backed up against a cage, and Joey Holt is throwing absolute devastating punches to the ribs. And he hits him in the liver, and he just going body head, body head, doing a great job with combinations. And eventually, Andrew Osborne couldn't take it anymore. Well, Rich, it's like we talked about early in the fight. If he can get in close, and he can get inside with his boxing background, he's torquing his whole body into those punches and turning into it like a pro baseball player swinging a bat. And he's absorbing all the impact. And these are four ounce gloves, not like the last fights we watched being seven ounce. And you can tell right now, he's just holding on for dear life. Great stoppage by Chip Snyder. If Mercy any, flowed, and the match is called to an end with about two seconds left. If anybody tells you you can't stop a punch to the body and you have to hit that head, think again. Kill the body, the head will fall. Attack the body, the head will fall. It's that simple. It's old boxing. Let's go to Dan Bogan for the official announcement. <laughs> What a phenomenal performance. Once again, showing great composure at a professional level of waiting for the right opportunity to strike. Once he tired him out, great strategy. Got inside, was unable to just throw those powerful body punches and get all of his body behind it. He was able to dictate what was going to happen. Your final thoughts, Rich? My final thoughts, that could potentially be fight of the night. It, that was incredible. That was just an awesome display of using hands. And he even changed it up and took him down. Andrew Osborne. 
bless him for all of his hard work and his and his heart that he put into this. He gave the crowd a great show. Great, great performance by both men. Neither should hang their head for anything. Osborne, great job. Hats off to you also. This is the this is what it's all about in the professional. You're seeing true craftsmen at their trades right here tonight. We're ready to take a quick commercial break, and then we can go to our co-main event of the evening at Gladiators of the Cage 19. We'll be right back. <laughs> 